entrance. Now you're all very welcome. Uh, my name is Sharon and I'll be the guide to take you inside. Because there are so many of us here today, we're going to have to divide up it's quite a wonderful um, commentary on the history of this area and had I known that I would not be able to film inside I would have recorded everything she said in her wonderful Irish accent but this new grange was built by the Neolithic people the new Stone Age people and what she was talking about is it's a passage tomb, uh, passage tomb is what they call it, and all this material was quarried from tremendous distances away at such a time that, in their belief, they did not even have the wheel or perhaps even the horse, but they believe that all the materials were transported by boat, which we are in the Boyne Valley, and down behind us, the Boyne River. Um, there it is. Um, anyway, would be um, the way they transported all these things. which is all the white rock, um, she said was quarried some 150, 200 miles away. The smooth little granite stones that are poking out from place to place were quarried from another direction, I don't recall what she said. And then the ridge stones, I guess we call them, these huge ones, um, from another area, and see the size of them. She said she believes they probably dragged them, rolled them on rollers made out of trees, so on and so forth. The second group of people to come were of the Bronze Age, and these little markers out here um, are the site where they have found cremated animal remains. Um, these little pegs, and then this was also um, like a wood hedge, like, much like stone hedge. behind now. Here where the rock is ending and the sod is beginning. Not quite sure what this is called. Of this building. Huh? It's like a one room, Steve. Well, that goes. I bet this was a ceremonial building. I mean, look at all yeah, the little. Yeah, and then there's, there's one small little place inside the room. It's like a room. There may be more information up there on that. Um, there's a. Back. There's a. Plaque thing out there, but look at how this is done. Yeah. And it's like she was saying to begin with, it was stone and earth, stone and earth, stone and earth, but to get the carved. It is. I carved. mean, that's cement up there now, but 
Hey, oh, the bird's nest. Bird's nest, uh oh. No wonder there was birds coming in here. They look like bats. Are you filming that? Yeah. Isn't that kind of hard? Yeah. Whoa, it's weird in here. You know what? I bet this was a crematory. <laughs> yeah, I bet you're right. Because it's got smoke flutes it's got, and stuff. Yeah, and this was probably off of there. They probably brought the bodies in here to cremate them and then took them out to bury Below this building. It's another rock wall past a gorgeous um, castle. Um, with wall that just continued and continued and continued at Slane on the way here. Yeah. We're complimented back at Tara that we do not sound like Americans. Yep. It's a rock with some markings on it me. that um, is in this enclosure. It means something, but we don't know what it means. So what else is in there, right? The castle ruins as we're driving down. Zach had seen that first on our way to Newgrange. Of course, now the fence is in the way. And then we saw the other castle. of Navan and as I'm standing here I can't think what this is called. I see it in a lot of postcards and tour books. But this is a cemetery here. Old wall and many old headstones there. There's a plaque up there on the tower. We'll walk up there and see what it says. More. The first monastery here is said to have been founded by St. Patrick or St. Kufmeyer. Kassen was plundered in 854. The round tower was built possibly in the 12th century. And it is unusual in having a hmm, crucifixion carved above the door and two heads on the side. I can't keep reading this through here. Continues to say. Round towers were built as bell towers, but also as places of refuge in the early Christian period. The present church was built in the 15th and, or 16th century and replaces an older church which had become a parochial church after the Norman invasion. And then it says all the same stuff in Gaelic. Um, What's that? Over here, there's a window. Uh -huh. And on the top is somebody crucified. Yes, that's what it was saying is unusual. Here is the crucifixion it's talking about. Very weathered. And then on each side, there's weathered faces. And this door is quite a ways above the ground level. Old stones here. One's in the background there. 1794, 1794, 1799. From here, 1897. There's just a metal cross, painted silver. Right up to a relatively recent grave here. Big one there is uh, 1832. This round tower in the background, and then the ruins of the church. What's left of it there? I'm a shot of some of the beautiful old gravestones here in this 
particular graveyard. Stone here, 1815, 1844, 1845, 1876. Those are the death years of each of the people in that plot. Good morning, Zach. Morning. This is our room in Athlone. Um, outside of Roscommon, and there's a double bed and a single bed, and television, and dressing table behind John, and a little bathroom here, I mean little sink there, and open that door, Zach, would you? Has a, you're going to have to get out of the way, Zach. Um, coffee maker, tea maker in the room, and its own little private bathroom and shower. And the cost of this is um, including breakfast, it was 16 pounds for John and I, and then some for Zach. I'm not sure exactly how much, so. Less than 24 pounds for the night. This is um, between Athlone, where we stayed last night, and Roscommon, on our way into Roscommon. We had to stop because of all the stone fences out here. Just right along the highway, so we get a lot of highway noise, but 